Hey guys, so today I decided to go through my old uh, notebook from art school at Watts Atelier and I pretty much just every lecture or I should say every demo they had I would keep this with me and just write down one or two things from each demo that kind of stood out to me. So I have a lot of information in here on little helpful uh, techniques in drawing the portrait and I went ahead and did a little face study where I focused in on the nose mostly and some of the eyes as well. So we did five different uh, faces and went over those little uh, tips and tricks that I picked up from uh, art school way back in the day. And I hope you enjoy it. And also if you want to support the channel, pick up a Rhythm Head t-shirt. Link is below. Thanks guys. So we got our heads here, we're going to start off with this first one and basically just starting off with the cross of the face, the brow line, center line of the face, bottom of the nose, and then just built up a very simplistic blocky shape of the whole nose and try to get the brows to line up uh, sweeping from side to side. So already you can see that we have a very basic, very blocky shape. And this is really important because it really helps you to line everything up before you get into too much detail. And if you have to change something, it's, it's better to change it at an early stage, like this big blocky shape. And then after this stage, we're, we'll go into like the geometric form and work on the nostrils and whatnot. But that big blocky shape really, really helps to... Um, get everything lined up first. So I'll make a big circle for the greater alar cartilage of the nose and then I'll just map in the nostrils and try to line up the eyes pretty as much as I can. So I like to start off with a big circle for the eyeball and then map in the shape of the eyelids on top of that. Now I'll just come in and do some some more shadow mapping looking for core shadows, cast shadows, and just trying to build up from that structure some shadows and uh, texture. This is a really good example of the eye shape in a three-quarter pose and showing the perspective of the head turning in space. So this eye, you'll see the two little V shapes in the corners. The other one, you'll see the, the inside but the outside is a more of a flat edge and that is really important because that shows the perspective that the eye is in. So you have the edge of the face, something like this, the cheek, and what's happening is the eye is wrapping around the form and it's turning in space and so that edge of the eye is going to be flat. So if I drew a basic eyeball shape and then we came over and cut into it and showing the eyelid kind of wrapping around that ball on the far side and then it's kind of comes down and you get a little bit of a shape like that. So what you want to see is this flat edge right there and of course you have that V shape and you have the flat edge and you can see that's because the eye is turning in space and wrapping around and you can see that really well over here. So I exaggerated the uh, eye a bit on the, the diagram here, but just trying to show how that eyeball is really turning around in space and creating this flat edge on one side. So now I'm going around and just building up the, the mid-tones and trying to really support those highlights with some value surrounding them. And I'm also looking for what's called occlusion shadows. And those are the shadows where reflective light really just has a hard time getting to. And so these are the darkest areas in the shadows. Okay, so I just want to run down the important anatomy pieces of the nose. I'm going to start with the keystone shape right up top. And that's this little wedge shape right between the brows. And it's also called the glabella. So it's keystone, or you can call it 
the glabella. And right underneath that, you'll have the nasal bone. And depending on the person, you'll be able to see it or you can't. In this case, we really don't see it. It's a very smooth transition from the bone to uh, her cartilage, her upper lateral cartilage. But let's pull this over here. And this will be the nasal bone. And then coming off of that, like I said, is the lateral, upper lateral cartilage. And sometimes you'll see this ridge right here. But of course, we don't see anything. It's a really smooth transition on her. So this is the upper lateral cartilage. And now for the main attraction of the nose is this big ball shape. And this is the greater alar and it has a split right down the middle. And so there's one there's a left side and a right side. And let's come over here. This is called the greater alar. And alar just means wing like in shape. And then off of that, kind of attached and wedged right into the side of the greater alar is the nostril. And the nostril isn't cartilage, it's actually a fibro fatty tissue. And then you have, of course, this one over here as well. So that's pretty much the rundown of the uh, anatomy of the nose. And let's go on to the next one. And the next face. Starting off with the brow line, find the center line and the bottom edge of the nose. And just build out the basic structure. So again, you can see that big blocky shape that I was looking for, along with the, uh, the roundness of that greater alar and the nostril, and just sort of like looking for that lineup of everything. And he has a really, really strong edge on his uh, bridge of his nose, whereas the previous one was very smooth in that transition. And in his case, he has a very strong line for the nasal bone, and then that upper lateral cartilage side that come, kind of comes down like that. So everybody's different, everybody's got like their own little unique features. And this guy is definitely a, a fun one to draw. So at this point, it's pretty much white knuckle drawing, shadow mapping. There's a lot of wrinkles and little, little intricate little details to go over. But I'm really just trying to build up support for the highlight along the rim of the nose and also looking for those occlusion shadows as well and looking for soft and hard edges. So on this one you can really see that nasal bone right there, really strong, and then the upper lateral cartilage that I was talking about before coming down and attaching to that greater alar and you can even see the split in the middle of that that ball and then of course the nostril so it's r really strong on some people like him and that that highlight will run or run along that ridge of that uh, nasal bone and the upper lateral cartilage and it's just really good this is a really good example of that next one is going to be the front view Straight on view, starting off with the brow line, center line, and bottom of the nose. So this one is a really nice uh, front view. Very, very blocky. You can see I'm just coming all the way down. It's like this, almost like a, kind of like a kite shape right here. And then that greater alar rhythm, and then it comes down to the peak. So again, I'm looking for those big shapes, those big blocky shapes to kind of like make everything flow together. And then I'll come in again with the nostril shapes. And see how much, it's so much easier if you start off with that big blocky shape to find the, uh, the borders of everything 
and then you come in with finer and finer detail. And here I'm again shadow mapping, but also trying to build up the midtones to support the highlight on the nose. So bringing in value, pushing it up against the edge of the highlight. So the angle of the upper eyelid to the bottom eyelid is really interesting. The upper eyelid will peak somewhere right about here, whereas the lower eyelid will bottom out somewhere down here. And you'll get this really interesting angle that runs from top to bottom, the top being closer to the inside and, the, and angling out. And it's really good to look for because it'll help you to kind of line up your eyes and make sure that they, they look realistic. And there's a shape I want to talk about. It's called the Fabergé egg. And it doesn't show up on everybody, but when you see it, it's really nice. It's a nice shape to kind of try to push a little bit and just uh, pay attention to. It runs along the border of the eyebrows and then flanks the upper eyelid. And there's like this nice little round kind of egg shape. And it picks up light really nice. So depending on the lighting source, if it's from the top, you may see this nice little core shadow. It's usually really soft and delicate. And it's just a really nice uh, shape to look for. And it runs along the, uh, the rhythm of the brows really nicely. So it's so important to get the highlight right next to the darkest dark, if possible, because that will really pop that eye off the page. Because then you have the darkest dark and the lightest light right next to each other. So this one, again, with the, uh, the shape of the um, keystone, you can see it really well right here and the greater alar, like so, and the nostril and such. But what I really want to talk about on this one is the shadows. So right here we have a very crisp hard edge. So you want to look for the shadow edge that's hard. You want to see edges that are, uh, this one's probably more of a medium, about right there, and then Definitely I'm looking for like a really soft edge. So this will be really soft right here. And this is a good, this is actually a good example of soft on top and hard on the bottom right there. So this is hard. So what's happening is the light is coming down from the top. It's filling in the hairs at the top edge of the brow, softening that edge up. But underneath it, you're getting some like cast shadows and and kind of shadowing, filling in the bottom portion of that brow, creating a hard edge. So just the, you can go around the drawing and kind of pick out places with the hard, soft, and medium edges. And try to look for those and try to push them a little bit to make it look three, more three-dimensional. And here's our next one. I'm going to start off with the brow line and then find the center line. And those two together is cross of the face, and then the bottom on the nose, and just looking for the big, broad, simple shapes. So this one is a really good example of the CSI types of lines. So you have the C curve, the S curve and then the straight. So right here you can see the big uh, or the uh, C curve and then the big S curve right there. And those two connect. And then at the bottom you have that straight straight line. So you have the, the C and the S and the I. So CSI. Yeah, I learned this one at this concept at Watts Atelier back in the day when I went to school there. And whenever I can find it in something I try to push it a little bit because it just really helps with the rhythm and the flow of whether it's a portrait or a figure. So CSI.
Again, I'm building up the support for the highlights with mid-tone and just trying to really make that pop a little bit on the nose. Okay, this one right here, again, with that big S curve that I like so much. And again, that little bit of that C curve, and then there was a straight. And you can see how I was trying to really push that shadow wrapping around the teeth cylinder. So a lot of times I look for a cast shadow and just try to push it a little bit extra just to show the form of the face better. And in this case, I think it worked pretty well. And the final one, starting off with a big sweep for the brows, and then I'll find the center line and the placement of the bottom of the nose. So this one, you can kind of see the S curve as well, right through here. But mostly I was just going with the uh, overall shape of the greater Alar and then the, um, the nostril on the side, and of course the brow. So here I'm going to come into the iris and cut a little wedge shape out and that's going to help support the highlight. And then I'm also going to come in here and put a little bit of tone down there to also help support that highlight. So if you had like a Pac-Man and here's his mouth opened, instead of his eyeball being up here, I'm going to think of the, the pupil and it is the darkest dark. And then the highlight is going to be the lightest light. So those two right next to each other is really going to make it pop, make the eyeball really stand out. So just to sum up, again, we have the keystone shape between the brows, which is also called the glabella. And then we have the nasal bone. And then off of that, we have the upper lateral cartilage. And something like that. And then we have that split right down the middle of the greater alar. And we have two sides of that ball. And then the nostril. So let me go ahead and label that again. Do you remember what this one is? That's right, the keystone and nasal bone and how about this one do you remember what this one is that's right upper lateral cartilage and my horrible handwriting <laughs> it's so hard to uh, make it clean okay and then f the big one right here the big form of the nose do you remember what that one is that's right the greater Alar. And for a bonus, do you know what Alar means? That's right, wing like. And then, of course, the nostril. So that's it for today's video. Uh, just going over some tips and techniques that I had written down in my uh, notebook from Watts Atelier when I used to go there a long time ago. <laughs> and uh, if you guys like this video, I got plenty of notes, that's for sure. Like I said, I used to carry the notebook around with me and ask questions and just when something does hit right in my brain, I would write it down so I wouldn't forget. And uh, if you guys want more tips and tricks from that notebook, I got plenty of it. So let me know if you like the video in the comments. And uh, also, again, if you want to pick up a, a Rhythm Head t-shirt, I greatly appreciate it. It really help out the channel. And uh, just have fun. So I'll see you on the next one, guys. Thanks a bunch. Bye.